This is Dan Ferraro. It's a new day in Utopia. And you're listening to Bring Me Your Torch with Patriot Jesse, Polyamorous Elaine, and not Beekeeper Jake. Welcome to another episode of Bring Me Your Torch. I'm Jesse. And I'm Elaine. And Elaine, a former guest and good friend of mine, uh, he was famous a couple years ago for a little thing called Chicago <laughs> for One when he traveled to Chicago for a bachelor party and no one else could make it because it was a snowstorm. He just went to all the sites and took pictures looking very sad and did hashtag Chicago for One and was famous and interviewed by uh, Carson Daly, I think on the Today Show, a bunch of places. Robbie Chernow, and I've known him for probably since 2010, so about eight years now. Uh, he got it. <laughs> Someone on his Facebook page called him a modern day Ferris Bueller. And I love say, it. That's exactly what he is. He uh, told me the day before on Monday afternoon that I should watch CBS at 11 o'clock Eastern time. And I'm like, okay, I'm like, wait a second. That's when The Price is Right is on. And sure enough, Robbie was the first person called, or one of the first four called down uh, for The Price is Right. And time after time, he wasn't going on stage. He was losing. And I'm like, hmm. This isn't good. And it came to the last person to be called because there's, there's six to ga- a game. There's like three. Then there's the spin the wheel. Then there's another three. And yeah. There's the showcase showdown. So he was the sixth per- person to actually get called on stage. And he did that game where the, you have to say what the price of something is. And however many dollars it's off, a yodeler goes up a giant mountain. That was mountain. so Yodel- easy, Isn't that not a really easy game, though? No, he did really, really well, though. I think he only but you know, can added I tell three you? products. Because, I, I mean, I know a lot of people who watch that game on Price is yeah. Right. And they say there, there's three prizes that you have to guess the price of. The first prize is $20, around $20 to $25. The second prize is around $30 to $35. And the third prize is around $40 to $45. So if you guess around that within $10 of each of those, you're going to win that game. So you can only be $25 off twin, and he was actually with all three only down $10, off $10. Yeah. So he did pretty well. So he won, uh, what did he win? He won a, a gym membership, a smart He, he a won smart a refrigerator, fridge. which I'm yeah, wondering smart what he's going to do with in New York City. He lives in Los Angeles, silly girl. He's in L.A.? Uh, no, I thought he was in New yeah. York. He's been in L.A. for a while. Uh, What's he a won, while? Like, like fitness like clothes? A couple, a couple of years. Like two years. Uh, so he did pretty well there. So then he went to the way to spin the wheel, and the woman ahead of him got like 85 cents. The next woman was over, and it came to him. And I forget what he got the first time. or the second spin, he got 85 cents as well. Um, and he went down. They did one more spin to see who get the best the best spin. Uh, she got ah, like 60 cents or something, and he got a dollar, which wins you a thousand dollars. And I was talking to him today. Uh, he, it was like if Drew Carey had sneezed. It would have gone to 15 cents. That's how close it was. And I actually asked him how Drew Carey, if he was nice, because Drew Carey was super nice. Everybody, the models were super, it was everybody super nice. Um, so then he went to the, the showcase showdown, and the woman before him bet like $45,000, which is way too much money you for what, what it was. That writing was so on the wall. Right when she said that, I was like, the showcase showdown, unless you're in like primetime television and they're giving away like eighty, a hundred thousand dollars worth of gifts, it's never that much. It's usually between twenty and thirty five thousand at the most. So you know, some people were saying Robbie only go a dollar, but yeah. he went like twenty four. He said like twenty four thousand five hundred and seventy two dollars. Something crazy like that. I mean, Robbie was he's a character and he was making the most out of his time on on the stage, kind of being silly. I mean, he's, he said they told him to have a good time and be fun, and he was definitely having fun. He was making Drew laugh a lot. He got to hug Drew. So in the <laughs> end, he won, and he won a uh, a Prius, a trip to New Orleans, and a dining set, and then he and his buddy there in L.A., they went, uh, they got in the car. He invited other people on the stage. I could fit three more, and then he went in the dining, on a dining set and had like a tea time. It was really funny. You and, think uh, he'll sell the car? I don't know. I, I was talking to him yesterday. He, uh, today, I, I asked him if he's calmed down from people, you know, uh, connecting with him. He goes, "No, no, it's everybody's you know, has something to say," which you know, everybody is excited for him. So good for him. Um, well, but he had nothing but good things to say. But the bad problem is he's got to pay like ten thousand dollars on taxes and all this crap. Oh my god, that's crazy. Forty, forty, about forty three thousand dollars in in prizes. And you know, taxes so between like. I don't know, anywhere between 15 and 25%, depending on your tax rate. But um, 
anyway, so what's he doing? He's in L.A., right? Is he like tr- he's, I think he's 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 pursuing you know opportunities. Uh, uh, there were some. There was some, you know, heat on him after the Chicago for one thing, and he's he's been doing comedy. I know when he was in New York, he worked for Sci Fi Network, so he's he was doing he was in New York recently, actually doing some work for his old boss. So he's uh he's working on things out there. So I mean, I I think he's gonna make he's gonna be a star. I told him today this is gonna be great. This will be a great early story when they make the biopic about his life. Uh, when he's when he's big and famous. Yeah, I think it's gonna be. And, and he did he did tell us if they ever make a movie about him, uh, bring me your torch. We'll get to be. <laughs> then again, it may just be me. I'll make you stay home. Sorry. This little uh, podcast that was talking about Robbie Chernow before he was famous. Did you hear about Robbie Chernow? I mean, this is the kid I was going to the bar with, <laughs> playing kickball with. I know. I and, went to see some of his and, improv in D.C. Yeah. People are always like, how good of friends are you? Because you know, sometimes people ask people you that. Are like, like, oh, they like, like oh, paparazzi? Oh, oh, okay. I could be like, oh, a friend of mine uh, won the lottery, but it's really just some kid I went to high school with yeah. who I barely spoke to, that kind of thing. I'm like, no, I'm like legitimately friends with him. So, uh, so you know, I want, we want to start off he's here. He's deserving of everything that he gets. So he's such a nice guy, and I can vouch yeah. for that because I've met him. Yeah, if you go back to our website and look under the celebrities we've interviewed, he's definitely there. You can go back and listen to our podcast. I mean, that was 2015, so that was about a year into the show. Uh, I can't believe it was that long ago. When he became famous. It was in 2015, yeah. actually. I was looking back at the Chicago yeah. for One stuff. It was in the fall of 2015. So he's been – he has about 19,000 – close to 19,000 followers on Instagram. So he's kind of a big deal. I think it's – yeah, I think it's Adventure, Adventures for yep. One on, on – to it, one of those things, yeah. It's no, a, it's like C R. Oh, C W yeah, Chernow. C W Chernow. Yeah, he's a good guy. Follow him. Um, you know, maybe we'll have him on the show. So, do you think he'll, if he comes on the show, do you think he'll talk to us about how he got on the Prices Right and that shirt he was wearing, just the whole thing? Yeah, well, he told me today. He said they basically, it's like when you try out for any of these reality shows, they sit you down like in groups of twenty-five and they like, interview for thirty minutes. You think it was a shirt? So, I think it was a shirt that pushed him over the edge. Well, it's also it's it's these things. I mean, we've all tried out for for reality shows in, in the past, and what you do is you get you sit center and right in front of them because you want to be the focus yeah. of attention. You have things to say. You get animated. You have to make the most of like three minutes. You don't have much time to talk to them, and um and he knew exactly what to do. So uh, yeah, and his shirt was good. Uh, he had a shirt that he bought like twelve years ago. It said, "I'm 18. It's my birthday. Uh, you know, get me on the show, Bob." And he crossed out 18 and put 30, and crossed out Bob and put Drew. Great. It was fun. He. It's, yeah, if I, if I can download the episode, I'll make a super cut for him and put it online. We'll see if we can do that. That'd be awesome. In addition to that, I actually saw a movie last weekend. Uh, I always talk about the movies I've seen. I saw The Post. Oh, yeah? That's with um, Tom Hanks and Meryl Streep and Steven Spielberg and a big cast. And it's about uh, – the, the it's a Pentagon paper regarding Vietnam and New York Times. Was, this is primarily on the Washington oh, Post. Oh, okay. And the reason I – and the reason I think it's really interesting, you guys should watch it. It's very timely. Um, a big part of the movie is uh, President Nixon trying to kind of squash a new story, not because it's bad for the country, but it's bad for him. And you know, if, if in that case, people think, oh, you know, he's not the country; he's the person leading it, and the country's more important than any one person. And, and you look to what's going on today in politics with uh, Trump. And with fake news and stuff, it's it's very relevant. I think even if you are on you know the other side of the, the political yeah. spectrum, and plus it's Tom Hanks, Meryl Streep. You it's mean good lots of mental illness in the White House? Is that what you're saying? Lots of troubled <laughs> human beings living inside the White House, both during the that's, Nixon that's administration and the Trump administration. So yeah, Nixon, Nixon's actually. A I thought you were going to talk to guy. me about Tom Hanks playing Mr. Rogers. Yeah, he's gonna play Mr. Ryan. I mean, what kind of movie is that gonna be? There's always, be awesome. there's always a fake rumor that he was like some Vietnam sniper. It's not true. <laughs> but uh, you know, hi, Elaine. I'm sure glad you're here. <laughs> we are such good friends. I try to wipe that from my memory. The whole Mr. Rogers. Well, you know, I, I feel I'm very much like Mr. Rogers. Like, I get home, I take my clothes off, I put on my comfy <laughs> clothes, just like Mr. Rogers. You know, Weird. I don't want to be in my work clothes all day. Won't you be my neighbor? No, I won't. Let's talk. Well, let's God. talk about Celebrity Big Brother and this whole D right. list cast. The end of last uh, week, uh, the Celebrity Brother cast was announced, and we'll go through. I mean, the biggest name on the list. I mean, I don't know biggest celebrity wise, but just the current news is Amarosa. You know, recently of the White yeah. House, obviously of The Apprentice. Uh, I think she's probably gonna be the first person out, or, or one of the first she'll, people. Yeah, I mean, she she'll has, be the first four people I mean, out. First of all, even on her best day, she's very. 
it's very disliked. I would. Say. I mean, she's very abrupt and very. Uh, Rash, you know, she's not the, the overbearing. Most, yeah, she's not like the hard to handle the nice person to be around. <laughs> And I think a lot of people, I mean, a lot of these folks, I would imagine, are skewed more liberal. I mean, it's, you know, Hollywood, as you always hear, is a little more liberal. And they're going to probably associate her with Donald Trump. And I think that will hurt her in this game. I mean, I think, I would I think that would hurt you in life. What if she spilled state secrets? What if she spilled, like, big secrets on the show, on the live stream? Like, she's like, yeah, you know, I won't tell this on the show, but uh, – but Trump was obstructing justice, and then he gets <laughs> caught on camera. They would definitely cut that out of CBS. They will go straight to the fishes on that one. I don't know. You know, the, NBC is where Trump was, so CBS might be like, screw that. Uh, let's go through the rest of the cast, though. We have uh, – I've never heard of this person uh, – Ariadna. It's not even Ariana. It's Ariadna Gutierrez. She was a Miss Columbia and a runner-up to Miss uh, Universe in 2015. Were you not like? Were you living under a rock when Steve Harvey announced the wrong name and gave her Miss Universe when it was supposed to? I remember Steve. I remember Steve Harvey. I don't remember anything about them. Well, she was the one that he gave it to, and then a minute later he was like, "Oh, it goes to somebody else." And so she was high and dry. I I had never even really noticed or cared or even seen her face. I just remember Steve Harvey announcing yeah, it. I just yeah. for, quickly forgot about her. But I'm glad she's on the I mean, show. I'm sure she's very pretty and cute and gorgeous. You know, maybe gorgeous. maybe she'll run, run around this house naked. Who knows? Uh, so, so It's going to be interesting how they handle the 24-hour feed or if they even have it for these celebrities because yeah, uh, you get to see these guys point. not when they're on camera, when they're just like, you know, shooting the you know what around the house but you know who i'm really rooting for in this entire season there's two people actually but the next one is brandy oh. glanville because i really watched the real housewives of beverly hills and i just essentially watched her self implode the entire time I, i've tried to watch the real housewives of beverly hills like i watched like three episodes i think and then but like, she has so anymore. she has a crazy story you know the one that you loved growing up leanne rhymes yeah well you know the whole story with which was just Sheena and Eddie. Yeah, Sibirian that whole freaking loved, crazy love time. What do you mean I loved? I mean, I like Leanne Rams. Yeah, love you Leanne love Rimes those. How do I what live without you? You love it. Come on, don't lie. Don't fight the moon. You can try <laughs> resist, to resist. Try to but, hide you know, from my kiss. You love Liam Rhymes. But you know. Yeah. Okay. So what happened? She banged his wife or Sheena banged her husband yep. or what happened? So Sheena banged Eddie Cibrian, obviously, but... Liam Rhymes was also hooking up with them at some point within those few years. And they're now married, Eddie Cibrian and Liam Rhymes. And Brandy Glanville kind of made that her claim to fame on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Well, that was why in the first episodes of Vanderpump Rules, Brandy yep. was coming to events exactly. and Sheena was all like, nervous. Yeah. We all then have uh, Chuck Liddell. He's a former UFC fighter and champion. He's sometimes an actor. I think he's in the Stallone movies, uh, The Expendables. Um, I really don't know how he'll play. I mean, I don't. I'd say maybe he's a physical threat, but who knows? Like once you get beaten up so much, and then you're older and you're kind of retired, who knows what your bo- happens to your body? And honestly, I don't know how smart he is. So that'll be I guess, interesting to watch. Um, then we have I, I don't know this guy. I mean, I've heard of the band James Maslow. He's a, from band Big Time Rush. I mean, I've heard of them, but I couldn't tell you anything I'm about shocked. them. I'm shocked. You usually know these like one off. Are bands. they? Is it, is it like a Disney band or something? I feel like it's definitely a one hit wonder. We'll have to go and see what songs they're famous for. Well, apparently he's, he's also an actor, and I recently was watching some TV show, and I, I can't even recall what TV show was, and someone from Big Time Rush <laughs> had like a small role in it, but I don't know. I'm looking it up right now to say Big Time Rush. These are things I should usually do before the show. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so Big Time Rush is an American – oh, it's not Disney. It's Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. An American television series that originally aired on Nickelodeon. It was created by blah, blah, blah. It focuses on the Hollywood misadventures of four hockey players from Minnesota. Oh, I thought Big Time Rush – isn't that a band? Oh, they're four hockey players what? after they are selected to form a boy band. So it's not just a boy band. There are four hockey players to become a boy band, whatever. So their most know. popular song is like worldwide is 13 million views. So it's a. I thought it was like one of those older kind of country bands that just sings one song from the '90s, and you're just like, oh yeah, I remember that song. But I don't know these boy bands, so. No, I mean, I I was of the age of like NSYNC and Backstreet Boys and 98 Degrees. After that, I got a little lost. Uh, next, is, she might be my favorite, not my favorite person on the show, but my favorite to win. I have two favorites to win. Um, 
Keisha Knight Pullman, she was Rudy on the Cosby yeah. Show. You know, you know people. One because I, I don't know, maybe she's gone crazy since then. But she strikes me as someone who's probably relatively normal. Maybe not though. I should probably look into that again as well. But uh, I'm sure people are going to be asking her about Cosby and stuff, which will probably piss her oh, off. Oh yeah, they will. They'll be sitting around all. Were you touched by Cosby? Shut up! I don't want to hear about. Touched by to Cosby. About Bill. That sounds like some weird. You got religion. the Jello pudding pop. I was the, touched by in the Cosby. Kodak film. Uh, you got. I've I've known who this person is. Marissa Jarrett. Winnaker, she's a Broadway actress. I, mean, I like Hairspray. Broadway. Was she in Hairspray? So. Was that? Oh, um, if it's a person from Hairspray, then maybe I'll yeah. recognize who she is, actually. Okay. Uh, Mark McGrath from Sugar Ray. I think he probably has a good chance so my, of my Yeah, my husband, Ron. Of course, we know Ron. He um, he projects Mark McGrath to win. So Mark McGrath actually has a really great radio show, syndicated radio show. Yeah, I think he's on, he's on Sugar Ray. Yeah, Sam, it's definitely. really good. He's a great personality. Oh, shows are easy. You just have to like set songs. You just record. No, all no, no, no. Play, he talks know? to guests, and he has a lot of personality. Obviously, he's very smart politically. I think he'll do really well in this game. <laughs> all right, yeah, he's my pick to probably win. I would say too. Uh, Metal World Peace, formerly known as Ron Artest. Now, Ron, when he was Ron Artest before he went kind of crazy and changed his name, he was a uh, he was either I forget if he was playing for the Pistons. Or the Pacers, but they were playing a game, and someone like in the crowd threw a drink, and he went to the crowd and like punched the guy or something. So he he in a sense he he then won a championship with the Lakers, and when he interviewed the first person, he thanked his therapist. So I think he's you know calmed down as he's gotten older. That's great. But I, I can just see him getting riled up and losing his mind again. I mean, the guy goes by Metal World Peace now. That's I would great. He, he might go crazy. Next is Ross Matthews, who I don't really, I mean, I, I kind of remember I, I was more of a Letterman guy. I guess he was like Ross the intern on The Tonight Show. Was he? Done, yeah, he's done stuff oh, since, I guess. I don't know. He's done a lot of like um, these fashion shows, these fashion network things. You know, I was never a Letterman guy. Commentary, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a big personality. I'm sure he's fine. And then Shannon Elizabeth uh, from American Pie, uh, all men around my age who were... Uh, Seniors in high school at American Pie came out. We'll remember uh, Shannon Elizabeth. So uh, maybe she'll recreate some of those. By the way, can we just say D list like all around this whole cast? And there's only what 11 of them here, 12, whatever. I can't count. Well, it wasn't like Meryl Streep's going to be like, I was in the post and then I decided to do you know, Celebrity Big Brother. <laughs> it's not how it happens. Yeah, but you can These get the same people on all the reality people, shows. Jesse. Who? Who who would you want to see on the like show? Like people that are on reality television right now, like C T, people who are relevant right now. You call I mean, I love C T, but he's not B list. He's C list at best. I mean, he's big in the challenge hey, world. But he also but, uh, would stir a lot of stuff up here and he would be good for maybe he doesn't play want a good it, political though. game. Not somebody who's was famous like in the nineties. Like I don't care about these people. All right, all right. Well, let's move on. Or Leanne Rhymes. Sure, that would be a good one. Yeah, she, yeah she, she, I don't think she wants to go on there. So uh, last episode, one of our listeners had mentioned that we should watch the show. So good, well, by the way. Lock up. So we said, sure, why not? So three episodes have aired. We've actually just watched two. So we're going to go over it a little briefly. So we meet a couple of the, uh, a couple of the couples, a few of the different of the couples. Uh, and I mean, this is it's basically like 90 Day Fiance. It's so only good. Instead of them being in another country, they're in jail. Uh, it's it's just not going to end well for no. most of these people. So the, the first group is Scott and Lizzie. So Scott, I would say, is an older gentleman. I don't know, like maybe he's late 50s. Maybe he's, I, don't know, I can't tell you, he has gray hair. He's kind of raggedy looking he's a single he's father he's the truck driver right and uh li- I, I don't <laughs> but lizzie is serving or was serving eight years for uh several dui charges she mentioned that she ran over some guy's foot there's once. more to that story by uh, the way and, and and they've known each other had some kind of relationship you know, i guess the most relationship you can have while someone's in jail uh, for about two years and over that time scott has sent her twenty thousand dollars Hmm, you know, as a single father, maybe you want to put that in your kid's like, I don't know, college much money, fund though. or a wedding fund or something. What, $20,000 for some yeah, chick who's in jail? Yeah, but 10000 a year? I guess when you're a truck driver, that's a lot of well, money, but I don't it, know. If you love somebody... It, it, it's, that's called being a bad father. It's called being you married. A, if you have you a son, are, if you're take your son. He's not married, though. He, he's never even been with this girl other than writing letters and, like, Con- conjugal Are they doing conjugal, conjugal, conjugal Have visit. they talked about conjugal No, conjugal no, no, no. No, she basically sends him, you know, sexy photos, and then wants money back. And she was doing this I to a whole bunch of dudes. I pretend I'm in jail and, and get on the site and totally get money from these people. 
well, I checked out a couple of these sites just to see what kind of like quality women there were. Sadly, there was there was nobody in uh in Connecticut, but some of them like want just men. Some of them just like want pen pals. Basically, it's it's interesting, and you know, all of these women look like even the ones that are cute are like cute women who are kind of like beat. You know, like they've lived a hard life uh, already. I love that she said that Scott was initially a trick, but now it's real. Yeah, because she's already talked to him on the phone about how she wants all this. She's gonna be a giant. Have you been writing any of these ladies? You know what she's gonna. Not yet, but you know we'll see how desperate I get. Hey baby, my name's my name is Jesse. Uh, I like so, long walks on the beach. Oh wait, I'm sorry, you you you're stuck in a cell. I have another crazy story. If you listen to our podcast a couple times ago, more people you've known that gone to jail. So no crazier story than that actually than me dating crazy okay. people that okay. ended up in jail. I had a friend in middle school and early high school. He ended up dropping out, who killed another one of our friends mutual friends over drugs very depressing he ended up in jail um for life actually and over the years he's on facebook i don't know how often he gets on he might get on like once a year once every couple years because obviously he's locked up for life right so i I, like every now and then people will write on his wall when it's his birthday hey we miss you just in case he sees it and i had i keep like sometimes every now and then i'll have a dream about him because he's a good friend of mine in middle school and high school and like i kind of feel like i want to write him not for any other reason than you know what Uh, you know we're thinking about you on the outside here why do you think he killed one of your friends? Why are you thinking about it? Who cares? It wasn't like a, a good – it was somebody we knew. It wasn't like <laughs> – He still killed a human did, being. I mean know? I don't know. I wasn't there. Like I don't know what happened. All I know is this person was a friend of mine, the person who killed this other guy. And you know what? Sometimes people need to be forgiven. Come on, Jesse. Have a heart. Well, why don't you ask the family of the guy? So are counts? any of these people in there or were they locked up for like hard crimes, like killing people? Or is it all just like DUIs so. and like, oh, I ran over? I don't think it's like locked up. I mean, I don't think it's like murder because I, I mean, how can you that, – that puts a shadow, casts a shadow over everybody. So the next group is Jonah and Garrett. So Jonah, she basically said she got hammered one night, drank too much wine, decided to go on one of these websites. She found Garrett. He was uh, serving seven years for burglary, grand theft, and a bunch of other stuff. It, it's so, so strange. Weird. Jonah's father is, you know, out on this relationship because she thinks he's kind of, uh, you know, probably bad news. Shocker. I wonder where he's getting that idea from. Yeah. So he, he's actually one of the first people to actually get out on the show. And he goes there and he's, you can tell he's like a moron. You know, but he's like, hey, he, he might come on our looking, podcast. So like he could be a he's moron. not a moron. He's the smartest guy you've ever heard. He's like, no, no, no. He's, he's a sweet guy. He, he's like, hey, man, I haven't had sex in like seven years, man. Well, he got locked and, up when he was and, 18, right? And so now he's 25. He's getting, I don't know. He, he goes into the shower with her and bangs her and he's like, dumb. Yeah, but the thing seconds. that you're missing this whole story <laughs> is that she's tracking his phone. She gives him a phone and she puts CPS on it. I would too don't trust that guy. Well, rightfully so. She, you know, she's he's there for a week and like, you know, by the way, she's been, you know, there for him doing all this stuff. She's letting you don't him think live she's in his a house. little psycho. He just like, goes out. Well, she as she goes, she goes. I told you I was psycho. You knew what beginning. you signed up for. And she goes, I never hit it. Yeah, but you know, let's be honest. If you're in jail for like seven years, you get out and you're living with this girl. It's not yeah, gonna work like, out. You know when. Well, he's so stupid because he doesn't know technology is that he had like, the read receipt on. So she would be like, where are you? And then it would show that he read it, but then he wouldn't respond. Then he comes back and he's just like berating her and calling her crazy. And she's like, I hate you. And I, I don't know what happens in the third episode. I'm sure maybe they've made up. And I apologize for not seeing that far, but it's going to crash and it burn. Totally it's not going to work out. And I can't wait to watch it. Yeah. Next is Andre and Lamar. Uh, they're from Utah. Uh, Andre is a Mormon and a single mother of three kids. And Lamar is a former rapper who's finished up an eight, eighteen-year sentence for. I mean that that's a long. I mean that's like that that sentence can now vote for president. You know that's how long that is for armed robbery. He's also a former gangbanger. Uh, you know, and she comes from like a you know a nice religious uh, uh, area, and and you know she hasn't shared her past with her Mormon community because they're probably going to sh- you know frown oddly upon enough, him. probably not going to like Lamar it. definitely seems kind of grown, and he seems like he's been through a lot, and he's not going to be back. And get back into the same stuff that he was into when he left 18 years ago. Honestly, this storyline actually bores me a little bit. Why? Through a lot of it, I don't know because like I just was watching all our friends. Yeah, but if you can like if you compare him to Garrett, you know Garrett, he's 25 years old. You know this guy is going to end up right back where he was. But I don't know. Lamar seems like he's a little bit different. 
I don't. I have a problem with these people on the show being very selfish. She has three kids. She's a single mother, and she's bringing a guy who's in jail for 18 years for armed robbery into the house. I think that's. I think that's inappropriate, and I think it's being a bad right. mother. You have to. You have to I care agree. about your kids' well being before your she own love life. Should have put him up in some apartment somewhere and then just saw how it went and how he interacted with the kids before she brought him in the house. I'll give you that. Yeah. Cause if we've learned, if we've learned anything from just the first two episodes of the show, it's that, you know, a lot of these people act one way when they're yeah. in the clink and in the slammer and they act well, a little I mean, differently. Years, I, mean, a lot of them are, gonna... I mean, he's emotionally stunted. He doesn't, he probably doesn't even know how to use the internet. Oh my <laughs> God. I don't know, the kind world's of, ending. Maybe they had... You don't know how to use the internet. Yeah. Well, he's like, he's like, I'm going to go to webcrawler.com. Is that a thing still? You know, these guys, like, you see, these guys don't really use iPhones. They're so, like, like lost. AOL and um, Messenger back then. They've already retired it. Mail. Like, he was in. He's like, I've got my CompuServe account. So in the jail before AOL Instant Messenger, and then they retired it, and then he got out. Like, I don't think before, but yeah. So the last couple here is Ala and James, and Ala's a former model serving five years for selling heroin, and she looks like someone who's a former model who got like, really yeah. strung out. Uh, the, the website says that her, her sense of humor and vivacious personality immediately captured James's attention. But let's be honest, he wanted her because she was attractive. Like he wanted to bang her. That's, that's people getting there. five years for selling heroin, and a girl who's like twenty well, years old at that. Like you're so impressionable. You're so young. You can't. You can't. Break the, well, it doesn't matter. If she's young because apparently reports are that Allah's a back in jail uh, while they investigate whether she uh, violated the rules of her supervision by using illegal drugs, lying to law enforcement, and, and leaving Wisconsin without a travel permit. I heard that she like, went traveling to get more drugs with like an undercover cop or something. What? And and James apparently is still married, but in the process of getting divorced and has two children. And that's not anything we're seeing on this show yet. Oh. So this is a very How do you not couple. love this show, by the way? It's, a, it's interesting. Interesting. It's on the Wee, Wee TV, We Network. So good. I'll probably get tired of it again because it'll all be stupid and just pathetic and I won't be able to take it anymore. What are they going to do next? Like Love on Mars? Love on Death Row. Love on Death Row. I like that. He's going to be dead pretty soon, but I love him. So. He's going to be injected or hung or whatever they do these days. So the challenge vendetta has had a kind of a crazy last couple of weeks, and in the beginning of this last episode, uh, the Troika nominated – by the way, the episode before this, oh my god, Tony – Ate the most. He ate marshmallows, but he ate like rotten cheese and he ate a bowl of mayonnaise. Like I, to be honest, I don't give a crap because you know I'm so damn hot for Melissa. I'm not hot hot for her accent because that just sounds so redneck UK London accent. But she looks hot as hell. Uh, so she she looks like a former MMA no, fighter. No, she's so, not. So the, the Troika nominated. She yeah, couldn't she is, even the hold her own night. when she was with Sylvia. Like, oh, she was kicking him in the like, face and wrapping her up. I mean, I don't think she was like professional. She wasn't like Ronda Rousey or something, but she like dabbled in in uh, mixed martial arts. So the Troika put up uh, Brittany, Melissa, and Kaylee. And it seemed like Brittany was going in. Everybody seems to hate Brad. I mean, the last episode before this current one, he got in the fight with Maria for eating pizza. You know, I have a problem that um, I'm getting – I'm not liking a lot of the friends of, of Kayla. And I feel bad if I criticize them. I'll make Kayla mad. she's friends with but everyone now? Marie, did she, I feel like she's got in a lot Marie, Marie did – she stole an entire box, of, and so she took an yeah. entire box of pizza, and then came back for more. And I mean, I think Brad was right to like call her out for that, but they all treated him like he was an idiot. Like, basically, they're basically saying that he's devolving into like like a caveman. Like Brad lift weights, <laughs> Brad make out with Brittany, Ooga booga. I mean, he does have like more muscles now than he did before, and he has like, this massive. Beard. I hate when people steal food though, or don't like divvy it up when everyone's trying to eat. Yeah. Drives me nuts. Yeah, somehow Brad's like the jerk. So, so Brittany's gonna go in, and then Melissa and Cam get in this huge fight, and like, so Cam is friends with with Kayla too. And Melissa and Kayla have been having this huge, huge fight on Twitter, where uh, Melissa is like swearing that Kayla cheated on her boyfriend in the house, and a lot of people, like everybody's coming to Kayla's defense, and like, no, she didn't. And it's, it's been going on for days. When we, when we get Kayla on, we're going to have to ask her about that. I might have to reach out to her again. I keep saying I'm going to do it, and I just don't. But it's been a big fight. But I actually think on the show, Cam was getting in Melissa's face more. I think she started. I was actually on Melissa's side at that fight last night. And, again, I hope I'm not making Kayla mad at all or anything. I don't know. I think people are really hating on Melissa, but she's also really obnoxious 
and hard to handle the stuff that comes out of her mouth. Well, she's a boyfriend stealer, it seems. Hey, if the guys can't resist you, it's not her fault. So this whole thing with like Nicole pleasuring Melissa, did I see that wrong? Does the, did I did I Nicole completely see kind, that wrong? Does Nicole have some kind of power to like bring over girls to her side? Hold on. I feel did, like she's did constantly. Did I not making... see that scene right? You you're the one watching TV. You can tell no, me. What I you saw see. them in bed and they had some sort of dialogue where Melissa was asking Nicole to pleasure. Am I well, am I completely making like... this up in my head? Am I sick? Are you asking questions just nobody or what's going on? I don't here? know. Did it happen? I don't get it. How did is the whole world how gone mad? Nicole pull this off. Like, how is she doing this with all these women? I don't know. She talks to go from She's Staten Island. She's so no, not attractive on any level. Oh wait, wait, wait to uh, insult another person on the show. I'm sure uh, Kay- Kayla's never gonna come on the show. Again. I really couldn't care less. Nicole, there's nothing hot or sexy about all right her. moving on to the uh to the elimination uh, we had melissa versus sylvia and it was kind of like going back to the price is right like a plinko game where they throw a ball down and it would bounce all over the place and then you had to be in your your knees and then get the ball and put it in the basket and sylvia and and melissa were just like going at it and melissa's like kneeing her and like biting her and and Can't kicking her that. in the head yeah and she's stuff. pulling and her was, hair out no it was pretty uh Pretty graphic. I mean, pretty hardcore. I mean, if I, Sylvia had a right to be. I'm mad surprised at that. TJ didn't step into that. Kicking. Well, at one point when they went to commercial, they made it look like Sylvia was going to punch her in the face. She almost but did. Really happened, but no. But in the end, Sylvia ended up winning, so it just didn't matter. So sorry, Nicole. You're going to have to, you know, convert somebody else to <laughs> and, and make out with them. So Vanderpump rules. Uh, this really is my favorite really? reality show at the moment. I, I'm really loving it. Yeah, I really enjoy this show. I, I've started watching more of what happens live with Andy Cohen afterwards, especially when they have people from the from the show on there. So this episode started off with Peter's birthday, and always being the instigator, Kristen flew Brittany's mom and sister in because she was trying to break up Jax and Brittany. And I think you know, everybody in the show is pretty much horrible, but – these people who are supposedly friends with each other are never happier than when they're trying to yeah, destroy each other. Yeah, because it's more camera other. time for them. Duh. I mean... But Kristen doesn't work Kristen at Sir anymore, though. That's what she is. And she has no real she's... reason to be on the show other than trying to stir up drama. And two years ago, they all hated her, and now they're good friends with her. It's, it's such a bizarre dynamic. They have... Uh, you know, Lala's there. Try- and by the way, they all love Lala, apparently. Uh, apparently, Kristen's a huge Lala fan. Everybody's a big fan of Lala these days. <laughs> and they're all be- they're all behind her relationship with the dude who's like, way older than her. And, you know, I would say he's not necessarily a looker. But Lala's trying to make peace between Sheena and Katie because they're kind of fighting. Uh, at the end, you know, Lala starts freaking out. She's still all like feminist woman power. So, you know, all the peas stand together in peace solidarity. You know, read between the lines of what I'm saying there. She She's all about, uh, you know, girl power, I guess. Yeah, she is. I don't really see how she became so tight with Ariane. Maybe it's all the relationship building she did off camera. But now that she's all buddy-buddy with Katie, I don't see that relationship. They all hate each other. It's and all like for, other. It's all for like the cameras. Other. Yeah, it's all crazy. So then uh, James and his uh, roommate Logan. Do you think they're banging? Logan, so two episodes ago was that the Pride episode, and and James was kind of all over Logan, like hugging him and stuff. And his girlfriend Raquel was kind of like, "What what the hell's going on here?" And then uh, at the beginning of this episode, Logan got in a cab with Brittany's sister and basically said that he was sleeping with James. And this pissed off James naturally. And, and I have to give him credit that most of the people are like, you know, we live in in Hollywood, like being gay or whatever. It's no big deal. We don't give a crap. They're mostly more mad that he might be cheating on his no, girlfriend. No, they're not. Though. I don't think any of them really seem to like the girlfriend. And they're just like being mad. Uh, but but James went over Brittany's house and had her sister there, and they called Logan on speakerphone. And Logan admitted that you know he made the entire thing up. Although some people like Kristen, you'll say, I don't think James is gay, but but maybe you know his penis was in Logan's. That's mouth. great. So I don't know. Now you, you said you thought James was gay. A while well, ago. yeah, of course. I mean, it's like clear that he's Why, of course. probably likes both, and he likes having a little trophy girlfriend on his arm. And he has a very cute girlfriend, but she seems very oblivious. And she might seem like she's not or that she's involved in his escapades on the side. But I just, I don't know. I think she just wants to be on camera. She wants probably wants to be famous, wants to be in the in crowd. You know, if there's anything wrong with uh, liking both sides. Uh, I, well, I've heard it said also that James... 
you know, will play up when Logan is like, attracted to him because he just likes being liked. You know, he wants everybody to want to sleep with with James. Uh, the, with the white Kanye, but uh, it, it's weird seeing James hanging out with Jax and Sandoval and stuff like they're all friends. Like for so long, they just hated each other, and now yeah, again, it's like Lala and Kristen. So. I just don't see it. It seems very put on for the cameras. Well, maybe it is. Maybe it's not. I just want to keep watching. Uh, in the end, Kristen's plan to break up Jax and Brittany kind of just. Blew up in her face. Uh, Jax was nice to Brittany's mom and sister and had a long talk with them. Basically said, you know, I cheat on her because I hate myself, which is kind of like a, a you know, it's out, called say, being a sociopath but, and being manipulative. Yeah, <laughs> he is. He's he's crazy. Uh, if you hate yourself and you do bad things, why don't you work on yourself rather than just he letting won't. it go and keep Let's cheating on serious. people? It's, no, it's 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 his thing. It's he's he's Jax and he's a mess. So so the the. Bachelor was really weird. So they went Are to you watching Fort this? Lauderdale. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm fast forwarding. I'm so this not episode, this interested actually relatively in Ari. Good. Oh my gosh. No, but this episode was actually good compared to some of the other ones. They went to Fort Lauderdale, which is weird. They didn't go to Miami. I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, Fort Lauderdale, I'm sure it's fine, but you know, yeah, Miami young, has, a bunch of young Miami women, has I mean, Miami's a place to go. Don't go to Miami. Who are eating people? And you love <laughs> zombies, though. So they had a they had a group date bowling, and they they split the girls into two different teams, and whichever team got the higher score, they could go to like an after party with Ari, and the other ones would have to go back to the hotel. So Crystal's team won, and uh, the losers, who included my girl Becca, Becca M, uh, yeah, they were kind of sad, especially because Crystal was kind of like in your face, like not directly, but you know, being a yeah. sore winner, I guess. And Ari felt bad for these girls. He said, you know what? Uh, I feel bad. It's not right. You guys all deserve time with me. So I think everybody should go to the after party. Well, oh, my God. Crystal lost her <laughs> mind. Uh, on the trip back to the to the hotel, they apparently didn't record it, but apparently she started calling Ari what? a liar and was just flipping out at people. And they're all getting ready to go to the after party, and she's just wearing a a bathrobe. And like, I'm not staying here. I don't like liars. I'm trying to find an equal, someone who awesome. tell me the truth. So I'm not going down. So they're like, all right. That's later, why you like this episode because there was a lot of drama in it. Yeah. Good. So they go down and, and Becca's doing a great impression of, of of Crystal. And then Ari comes and they tell Ari what happens. And then friggin' Ari, he leaves all the girls and goes up to talk to, to Crystal. And she's like, you know, this is our first fight, but I don't like that you're, you're lying <laughs> to me and blah, 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 blah. So Ari comes back down. And he goes off to like with one of the girls to meet them. And she's like taking them one at a time to talk to them. And Crystal shows up dressed up now. And she's sitting there and she's like, Oh, I decided to come back down now. And Becca <laughs> basically said to her, you're doing. You I'm said coming back. Yeah. She, back down now. Back, back down now. <laughs> so Becca says, You said you weren't coming and now you're here. Does that make you a liar? Because you were calling Ari a liar earlier. And she's like, I feel like I not like it. And she eventually just left again. And for the second week in a row, they made it seem like she was going to go home because she's a psychopath. And she gets the last rose Oof. for the second time. And and the chick who just came back this episode because her grandfather died the previous episode. Wow. Got sent home. You know, it, it may, maybe you just tell her you don't, you're not that into her rather than yeah. making her come back out and then go back home again. That's and not cool. And keep a psychopath in so, her place. Yeah, I mean, there were some one-on-one -on -one dates that I just fast-forwarded through because I just didn't care. I think, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I don't care. So this is a good show to watch. Going kind of fast-forward, like half speed or, or double speed. So it's going quicker as you can get through it. All right. No. So before we end today, um, two things. I noticed that you know, Summer House, two episodes have aired. I am are back you in. Back I am into back this in. Show. It looked like the worst show. I am show loving on this TV. show. I am. I am. Dig no, you are wrong. I am digging this show. And I'm going to work to get Kyle Cook on the show because he does okay. know my cousin Kyle. I think he's also named Kyle. We're gonna get him. I'm actually digging this. And what I love, so there's a lot of skinny dipping here. And one of the girls this is, why is, this is why voluptuous. No, vo voluptuous. One of the uh, workest sisters, I believe. So you know like in most shows, they just like blur out the boobs? Sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In this show, they basically just blur out the nipples, but there's still these like big pendulous breasts swinging now, back though. and forth. I like Have it. Have you seen I, Kim I, Kardashian's I Instagram recently? All right. Well, well no, go to it and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's very relevant to what you're speaking about. Uh, 
Uh, but, you know, jokes aside with the boobs and stuff, I, I'm just actually digging the show so far. I, I think maybe last year I was only half paying attention when I watched it, so I wasn't into it. Now I've been watching it, and I'm digging it. I'm not getting it. So I tell people to go watch that. And then finally, there's another show coming out. We covered Floribama Shore. Oh. The same people who brought you Floribama Shore, the same people yes. who brought you the <laughs> Jersey Shore. It's called Winter Break, Cannot Hunter wait. Mountain. It premieres on MTV on the 27th. It says, for one season of the year, the East Coast becomes the Ice Coast. Serving as a rite of passage for young people who want to get away for a winter break, Hunter Mountain is an idyllic uh, ski resort that offers 20-somethings a chance to escape their regular lives, ski and snowboard their brains out, and party with the other like-minded singles. On winter break, Hunter Mountain, we document the lives of eight young people who move into a shared house for the season. For, for the season. For the season. <laughs> uh, and, the, and the impact their winter together has on their lives. Um, so it's like... No, 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 it's like it's Opera Northeast. Ski. Um, no, it's, in, it's the first time it's happening on the East Coast. Well, there's, there's a person from, from my home state of Connecticut in there. Um, although from so Waterbury, is it like more of a... You know. I guess... An, I don't know. I think it's going to be like it's like the same show, only it's like cold right. instead of the other one. But ones. they're like, but they're upper north east and like rednecks from the south, right? No, no. That's that's what my friend said. You know, it's not as much fun when they're not like you know yeah. bluebirds from the south. But it's like someone from Connecticut, like, oh, someone from New Hampshire, there's someone from some tea, Massachusetts. Like, compared to the south, it's yeah. like you guys are so yeah. pretentious up there. There's, there's one person there's coming in from California. She's probably like, oh, up so. there in, in, in New England. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Austin is the capital. No, no, no. You guys are going to be like, my education system's the best <laughs> oh, here. I have to have my craft beer and my mustache that's perfectly weekend. trimmed. Ooh, Honey, we're going to go like, to the new microbrewery and, and spank each on. other. We all know what it's like in Austin. So watch this on the 27th, uh, the day before, the last day of the month, because it is a short month, remember. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. These MTV shows are, are really going old school okay. and bringing back some good stuff. So I'm I'm happy. So, all right, it's enough for one episode, I yeah, think. Thank you all for listening to tonight's episode. Well, we, we'll talk about that next time. You want to cover more of me? I, I was not in. I liked the first episode. Second episode bored me. That's, that's where I stand on that show. But we'll talk about it, it maybe at the halfway point intense. of the show. Yeah. There's a lot of going Waco, back and we didn't forth. Talk about Waco. Really oh yeah, we'll we'll cover we'll cover this all in the next episode. Watch Waco. My cousin Skip Skolnick is the uh, co-producer. He's he's kind of a big deal. Love Skip. Uh, we'll cover all this stuff in the next episode. It'll be fun. All right. Uh, remember to go to our website at bringmeyourtorch.com where you can find all kind of goodies about Elaine and myself, or me and Elaine, whatever is the correct. Elaine and I. Uh, I way to say it in the in the English language. Me. No, it's not I. It's because where you can find good stuff about me, <laughs> me and Elaine. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We're not English. I, I work. I I majored in political science. So I'm English, sorry. Uh, and after you listen to our podcast, and after you go to our website, just remember that you may have come here as a stranger, but you're leaving as a friend. We'll see you next Bye. time. Bye. Bring your torch.